The mace, a symbol of the authority vested in the university, is carried by David Pippi, Office of the Registrar. Convocation will officially open when the mace is placed on the table in front of the presiding officer. The music for convocation is provided by organist Dr. David Booley from Memorial's Faculty of Education and by members of the Mon Opera Workshop, directed by Caroline Schiller and Eldon Murray of Memorial's School of Music. I would like to respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic and the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and Beothic. I would also like to recognize the Inuit Nunatsiavut and the Tuavut and the Inuit of Natasinan and their ancestors as the original people of Labrador. We strive for respectful relationships with all the peoples of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation as we honor this beautiful land together. Welcome to Convocation. I have to begin with an apology. I have terrible laryngitis. I know you didn't notice, but I just thought I'd mention it in passing. <clears throat> I'm, I'm as fit as a fiddle. I'm, I don't feel sick anywhere, and this doesn't hurt. Um, but my larynx is not cooperating this evening. So I hope you, um, you enjoy the evening regardless of any croaking I do. Um, I'd like uh, to begin now by um, calling on Dr. Noreen Goffman, our provost and vice president, to make, to make remarks on behalf of our president. Madam Chancellor, Members of the Board of Regents, members of the Senate and faculty, members of the graduating class, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Well done. Our President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Gary Kachanowski, is un unable to be here this evening for health reasons, but he's asked me to bring greetings on his behalf. So I want to extend a very special welcome to our guests on the stage. From the university's governing Board of Regents, Eleanor Swanson joins us. Welcome. All of our regents generously volunteer their time and contribute significantly to the governance of our university. 
Today, a special individual will join the ranks of those who have received the university's highest honor, the honorary doctorate degree. I'm speaking, of course, of Timothy McNeil, champion of the Inui of Nundatsiavut and of all Indigenous peoples. Mr. McNeil has dedicated the past three decades to improving the health, education, and economic outcomes for the Inui of Nundatsiavut and across the Canadian North. Mr. McNeil will receive an honorary degree of laws, an honorary doctor of laws degree, and we will hear more about and from Mr. McNeil a little later. This evening, I'm also pleased to recognize four retired professors who were recently accorded the title Professor Emeritus by Memorial University Senate and Board of Regents. Dr. John Brosnan, Dr. William Brzezik, Dr. Douglas House, and Dr. Robert Sweeney. Our professors emeriti have given much of their academic, scholarly, and professional lives in service to Memorial University's mission. They have inspired generations of students and helped build this very fine institution. We will hear more about them a little later, and I look forward to congratulating them on behalf of the entire Memorial University community. Now, President Dr. Gary Kachanowski may be unable to be here tonight, but he did not want to let this occasion pass without expressing his congratulations and warm wishes to all of our graduating students. So I'm now going to ask you to turn your attention to the video screen. Welcome to the 2019 Fall Convocation of Memorial University. We are so pleased that you are here for what is always a special time in the life of a university, a time when we celebrate the success of our students. So of course, a special welcome and congratulations to every one of you, our graduating students. I know that your parents and family and friends and professors all played supporting roles in your success, and many of them are here to celebrate your accomplishments. But make no mistake, Ultimately, it was your dedication, hard work, and talent that brought you here today, so congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, on a personal note, as some of you may be aware, my second term and tenure as president ends in December, so this will be my last convocation as president. At my installation address almost a decade ago, I emphasized that my appointment was truly a life-changing event, and each and every day since then, it's been an honor and a privilege to serve as president of Memorial University. I have met so many amazing people over the past decade and their dedication to Memorial and their belief in and support of its core values has been truly incredible to experience. In particular, of course, it's been a joy to celebrate the many achievements of our wonderful students. Students like those graduating here today Every degree conferred today is the result of a personal journey requiring significant commitment and work and by itself is worthy of considerable accolades as an important milestone in each student's life. And yet, every year, our students amaze us with leadership and achievements above and beyond the required programs or responsibilities that distinguish them at a national or international level. We tell our stories of success and achievements throughout the year in our alumni magazine Luminous, on our Gazette News website, and of course each year in our online President's Report. Together they tell the stories of the incredible impact of the exceptional people of Memorial, our faculty, staff, students, retirees, and alumni, and how as active, engaged citizens they make the world a better place to live safer, more prosperous, and definitely more interesting. A key part of our success is the sustained and unwavering support from our partners. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank our community and public and private sector leaders and other partners for your unwavering commitment and support of Memorial University. Ladies and gentlemen, our university's origin, our vision, mission, and core values paint a picture of who we were, who we are, and what we aspire to become. Memorial is focused 
on meeting the needs of our students, developing innovative living and learning spaces, building and renewing appropriate infrastructure for 21st century teaching, research, and public engagement, and making a difference in our communities. The university embodies the aspirations of those who founded Memorial University College in 1925 to be a living legacy to those who paid the ultimate price for freedom in the First World War and in subsequent conflicts. A living legacy dedicated to the advancement of our society through education. This year marked the end of our five-year World War 100 commemoration program, which concluded this past summer with our Living Memorial Conference, a summary and celebration of the many diverse projects funded through the commemoration program. And while it is important to reflect on our unique history, we must also look forward and ensure that the university becomes a living memorial for the 21st century. And as such, Memorial is proud to be developing a veterans services program that will address some of the unique challenges facing serving members and veterans. Graduands, you are part of this living legacy. You walked into this hall today as students who have successfully completed the requirements for your degrees. You will leave as graduates and alumni of Memorial, your university. You have earned the rights and the privileges associated with your degree, and now this is your time. Your time to take to heart the responsibilities that also come with your degree and make your mark in Newfoundland and Labrador and across the country and around the globe. Best wishes to each of you as you leave here today to begin the next adventures in your lives. We shall now proceed with the conferring of your degrees. A very special moment for you and for all your friends and families who are here to celebrate with you this evening. I'm going to address them just for a second. I need to ask you a favor. Um, it's not an easy favor, but we would like you that unless some special circumstance is mentioned, that you'd withhold your applause until all candidates in each group have received their degrees. And then you can, that's not a glass ceiling, but it's a lot of glass up there. You can just go for it. Um, and you know, uh, somebody asked me recently, well, What's it like at Memorial Convocation? And I said, it's a, it's a wonderful celebration. And all the graduates are there together and their family and their friends. But really, convocation happens one person at a time. And the only reason we ask you this very special favor is if we allowed you to applaud the way you want to for every one of your loved ones. We'd be here till half past 11 tonight. It really is, a, it's just a, a logistics thing and I hope you understand that and thank you for helping us with that. So, it's just so extraordinary a day for you and an evening. It's the culmination of, of so much of uh, moments of exaltation and moments of pulling out your hair. And when you look at the road to get to tonight, it's such an amazing accomplishment. And um, we are so delighted that you chose to come here to, to walk that road, whether you came here from Elizabeth Avenue or Gambo or Jamaica or Ghana or Nigeria, I hope that in your coming here, wherever you came from, that you found a place to be at Memorial. And your coming has been hugely important to us. Every person here, every day you've been here, has helped to build our wonderful university. And we 
really, we really thank you for coming and uh, value that very, very much. We don't have very long walk, as Shakespeare said, I probably all, all the English professors will say, you didn't quote that exactly, but Shakespeare said we have such a short time upon the stage. So do we tonight. And um, it goes by pretty quickly and likely your adrenaline will be making your heart go a little bit faster and your breathing a little bit faster because it's so fabulous. I'm going to ask you if you'd like to think um, about why you're waiting to come across um, to capture some special moment or thought or feeling as you move through time. You're moving and isn't it interesting that you are moving is moving to you and to everyone who is here. I ask you to think about that and tuck it away as a little internal cameo because we do have all the digital accompaniments so that it's all recorded, archived. Your grandchildren, well, you will be able to watch your convocation, but your grandchildren will be able to watch your convocation. Wonder what the device will be. But they will be able to. So the kind of recollection I'm <clears throat> suggesting you capture for yourself tonight is a very special internal one that you may visit to inspire yourself or someone else as you go through the next phases. This here is the threshold. This is your life to this point. And you are hooded and admitted to the academy with your new degree. And then on you move into the rest of your fabulous lives. So I get the best job in the whole house. I get to meet and congratulate and shake hands with every single one of you and I'm really looking forward to that. Madam Chancellor, in the name of the Senate of the University, I present to you the candidate for undergraduate degrees approved for this session of convocation. I have certified to the Senate that these candidates have fulfilled all the requirements pertaining to the degrees. I therefore request that you admit them thereto. On the authority of the Senate, I as Chancellor will now admit the candidates to these degrees and confer upon them all of the rights, privileges and responsibilities which belong thereto. I call upon them on the hearing of their name to present themselves before me to assume the hood appropriate to the degree. For the degree of Bachelor of Education Special, Bachelor of Special Education. Alyssa, Pearl Brennan. Alyssa Pearl Brennan is from Bishop's Falls. Andrea Nicole Collins. Andrea Nicole Collins is from St. John's. Emily Frances Dalton. Emily Frances Dalton is from Harbor, Maine. Danielle Elizabeth Selena Eddy. Danielle Elizabeth Selena Eddy is from Conception Bay South. Emily Rose O'Reilly Nash. Emily Rose O'Reilly Nash is from Placentia. Stephanie Nancy Vokey. Stephanie Nancy Vokey is from Conception Bay South.
Caitlin Elizabeth Woodford. Caitlin Elizabeth Woodford is from Harbor, Maine. And those who've been approved by the Senate for the degree but are absent from this convocation. Admitted in absentia. the degree of Bachelor of Education post-secondary. James Joseph Brake. James Joseph Brake is from Stephenville Crossing. Degree of Bachelor of Education Intermediate Secondary. Kyle Peter Barron, winner of the Holy Heart of Mary Legacy Convocation Award. Kyle Peter Barron is from Stephenville. Holly Marie Bartlett. Holly Marie Bartlett is from Marysvale. Julie Susanna Boland. Julie Susanna Boland is from Gander. Penny Victoria Boone. Penny Victoria Boone is from Bishop's Falls. Jeremy Paul Brake. Jeremy Paul Brake is from Mount Pearl. Alyssa Jane Brothers. Alyssa Jane Brothers is from Gould. Miranda Moika Lynn Bursey. Miranda Moika Lynn Bursey is from Conception Bay South. Ashley Hillary Burt. Ashley Hillary Burt is from Mount Pearl. Todd Donald Butler. Todd Donald Butler is from Bay Roberts. Matthew Alfred Keynes. Matthew Alfred Keynes is from St. John. Kyle Nicholas Kareen. Kyle Nicholas Kareen is from Point Lance. Sarah Colleen Coombs. Sarah Colleen Coombs is from Plum Point. Brooke Alicia Des Moines. Brooke Alicia Damon is from Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. Ashley Denise Diamond. Ashley Denise Diamond is from Ottawa, Ontario. Cody Lawrence Dober. Cody Lawrence Dober is from Marystown. Morgan Olivia Domino. Morgan Olivia Domino is from Paradise. Nathan Adam Freak. Nathan Adam Freak is from Labrador City. <laughs> Bailey Cameron Fudge. Bailey Cameron Fudge is from Churchill Falls.
Tessa Graham. Tessa Graham is from Duro Dummer, Ontario. Rebecca Sandra Sarah Holliff. Rebecca Sandra Sarah Holliff is from Conception Bay South. Haley Marie King. Haley Marie King is from St. George's. Rebecca Lee Marr. Rebecca Lee Marr is from St. John's. Chelsea Jean Mullaney. Chelsea Jean Mullaney is from Gander. Brittany Ida McGraw. Brittany Ida McGraw is from Southeast. Terry Elizabeth Murphy. Terry Elizabeth Murphy is from St. John's. Marcus Michael O'Reilly. Marcus Michael O'Reilly is from Placentia. Brianna Alexandria Park. Brianna Alexandria Park is from Cornerbrook. Anthony Philip William Pomeroy. Anthony Philip William Pomeroy is from Conception Bay South. Shannon Nicole Reed. Shannon Nicole Reed is from Winterton. <coughs> Caitlin Rosanna Hick Ricks. Caitlin Rosanna Ricks is from Pollard's Point. Andrew Michael Rose. Andrew Michael Rose is from Harbor Grace. Matthew Keith Shepard, winner of the Blair Tulk Memorial Award. Matthew Keith Shepard is from Spaniards Bay. Ryan Patrick Shepard. Ryan Patrick Shepard is from Cornerbrook. Samson C. Chai Tang. Samson C. Chai Tang is from Tin Shui Wai, Hong Kong. <laughs> Jenna Elizabeth Marie Thistle. Jenna Elizabeth Marie Thistle is from Mount Pearl. Andrew Darren Tuck. Andrew Darren Tuck is from Hans Harbor. Rebecca Ann Walsh. Rebecca Ann Walsh is from St. John's. And those who have been approved by the Senate for the degree but are absent from this convocation. Admitted in absentia. Bachelor of Education, Primary Elementary. Michaela Benson. Michaela Benson is from Mount Pearl. Amber Lynn Brenton. 
Amber Lynn Brenton is from Norman's Cove. Stephen William Bercy. Stephen William Bercy is from St. John's. Stacy Madonna Carter. Stacy Madonna Carter is from Tours Cove. Megan Ann Davis. Megan Ann Davis is from Massey Drive. <coughs> Chloe Kathleen Durnford. Chloe Kathleen Durnford is from Conception Bay South. Ashley Elizabeth Fowler. Ashley Elizabeth Fowler is from St. John's. Jane Alexandra Gareffa. Jane Alexandra Gareffa is from St. John's. Rachel Stasha Howell. Rachel Stasha Howell is from St. John's. Melanie Rebecca King. Melanie Rebecca King is from St. John's. Tumisang Marina Makubu Mabula. Tumisang Marina Tumisang Marina Makubu Mabula is from St. John's. Elizabeth Joan Morris. Elizabeth Joan Morris is from St. John's. Stephanie Ruth Nadeau. Stephanie Ruth Nadeau is from St. John's. Lauren Elizabeth Newell. Lauren Elizabeth Newell is from Kippens. Alexandria Victoria Reed. Alexandria Victoria Reed is from Rocky Harbor. <coughs> Taylor Jordan Rogers. Taylor Jordan Rogers is from St. John's. Ursilia Jean Tremblet Danilo. Ursilia Jean Tremblet Danilo is from St. John's. <coughs> Tiffany Dawn Gale White. Tiffany Dawn Gale White is from Paradise. Brittany Bernice Wiseman. Brittany Bernice Wiseman is from Gander. <coughs> Emma.
and those been approved by the Senate for the degree but are absent from this convocation. Admitted in absentia. For the degree of Bachelor of Music Education, Emily Jean Finch. Emily Jean Finch is from St. John's. And those who have been approved by the Senate for the degree but are absent from this convocation. Admitted in absentia. Enrollment in graduate programs at Memorial continues to rise, topping the 4,000 student mark this fall for the first time. Since 2008, applications have increased more than 300% and are up 33% since last year. Dr. Trevor Bell and the Smart Ice team have been recognized with the Governor General's Innovation Award for their groundbreaking work on climate change adaptation. Smart Ice is an award-winning project that integrates on-ice technology, remote sensing, and Inuit knowledge to generate near-real-time information of ice conditions for Arctic communities. For one Memorial business student, a summer job also meant contributing to the well-being of her community. Shauna Dicker, a third-year student in the Bachelor of Business Administration program, worked as the Northern Logistics Coordinator for Smart Ice in Maine this summer. Madam Chancellor, in the name of the Senate of the University, I present to you the candidates for graduate degrees approved for this session of convocation. I have certified to the Senate that these candidates have fulfilled all the requirements pertaining to the degrees. I therefore request that you admit them thereto. On the authority of the Senate, <coughs> I as Chancellor, will now admit the candidates to these degrees and confer upon them all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities which belong thereto. I call upon them on the hearing of their name to present themselves before me to assume the hood appropriate to the degree. For the degree of Master of Education, Frederick Aday. Frederick Aday is from St. John's. Nicole Elizabeth Ash. Nicole Elizabeth Ash is from St. John's. Mohammed Ali Bakshi. Mohammed Ali Bakshi is from Kabul, Afghanistan. Matthew Clayton Blundell. Matthew Clayton Blundell is from Stephenville. Janetta Boyke. Janetta Boyke is from St. John's. Amanda Marie Buzan. Amanda Marie Buzan is from Carbonier. Jessica Susanna Bromley. Jessica Susanna Bromley is from Conch.
Michelle Teresa Butler. Michelle Teresa Butler is from Portugal Cove, St. Philip. Brady Colin Cameron. Brady Colin Cameron is from Chilliwack, British Columbia. <coughs> Ching Chen. Ching Chen is from St. John. Matthew Paul Colbert. Matthew Paul Colbert is from Gull Island. Jessica Ruth Collins. Jessica Ruth Collins is from Clarenville. Marissa Courtney Corrigan. Marissa Courtney Corrigan is from Trapassi. Jessica Blair Cohen. Jessica Blair Cowan is from St. John's. <coughs> Laura May Crocker. Laura May Crocker is from St. John's. Katie Duncan. Katie Duncan is from Toronto, Ontario. Nicole Elizabeth Dunphy. Nicole Elizabeth Dunphy is from Conception Bay South. <coughs> Jonathan Patrick Fitzgerald. Jonathan Patrick Fitzgerald is from St. John's. Aaron James Golding. Aaron James Golding is from St. John's. Christopher John Grandy. Christopher John Grandy is from Grand Bank. <coughs> Stephanie Dawn Greeley. Stephanie Dawn Greeley is from Conception Bay South. Adebambo Samuel Hastrop. Adebambo Samuel Hastrop is from St. John's. <coughs> Danielle Noel Isaacs. Danielle Noel Isaacs is from St. Lawrence. Lisa Elizabeth Kehoe. Lisa Elizabeth Kehoe is from Paradise. Laura Lee Laws. Laura Lee Laws is from St. John's. Donna Lee McInnes. Donna Lee McInnes is from Conception Bay South. Jenna Marie Mador. Jenna Marie Mador is from <coughs> Stephenville. Janet Francis Ann McDonald. Janet Francis Ann McDonald is from St. John's. <coughs> Jeff Channing Milligan. Jeff Channing Milligan is from Norman Wells, Northwest Territory. <coughs> Krista Marie Malloy. 
Krista Marie Malloy is from Paradise. Megan Teresa Murphy. Megan Teresa Murphy is from Paradise. Sarah Elizabeth Morgan Murray. Sarah Elizabeth Morgan Murray is from Bay Roberts. Susan Jennifer Pennell. <coughs> Susan Jennifer Pennell is from Paradise. <coughs> Brittany Piercy. Brittany Piercy is from Deer Lake. <coughs> Jonathan Rowan Singh. Jonathan Rowan Singh is from St. John's. Daryl Mervyn Stacy. Daryl Mervyn Stacy is from Grand Falls, Windsor. <coughs> Sharon Marie Stevenson. Sharon Marie Stevenson is from Holyrood. Elisa Tortola. Elisa Tortola is from Toronto, Ontario. Sharon Raven Warren. Sharon Raven Warren is from Mount Pearl. Catherine Wanda Woolridge. Catherine Wanda Woolridge is from St. John's. Yushuo Zhang. Yushuo Zhang is from Nanyang, China. And those who've been approved by the Senate for the degree, but are absent from this convocation. Admitted in absentia. For the degree, Master of Arts and Education, candidate in absentia. Admitted in absentia. For the degree, Master of Occupational Health and Safety. Annie Cordelia Brown. Annie Cordelia Brown is from St. John's. And those who have been approved by the Senate for the degree, but are absent from this convocation. Admitted in absentia. The funding of seven provincial projects is helping to advance several areas of aging research. The Aging Research Center, Newfoundland and Labrador at Grenfell Campus is awarding more than $68,000 in research dollars, providing funding to seven different Memorial University principal investigators. Memorial's newly refurbished internationalization office opened recently from its new space located in the Corte Real building next to Burton Pond Apartments on the St. John's campus. Staff and student employees deliver programming to assist students with transition, immigration, and career exploration, support families, discover learning abroad opportunities, and more. Two award-winning researchers from the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences are receiving one of the country's highest academic honors for emerging scholars. Dr. Rose Ricciardelli and Dr. Alex Marland are among the latest inductees to the College of New Scholars, Artists, and Scientists of the Royal Society of Canada.
Madam Chancellor, in the name of the Senate of the University, I present to you the candidates for doctoral degrees, the highest earned degrees conferred by this university. I have certified to the Senate that these candidates have fulfilled all the requirements pertaining to the degrees. I therefore request that you admit them thereto. On the authority of the Senate. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I, as Chancellor, will now admit the candidates to these degrees and confer upon them all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities which belong thereto. I call upon them on the hearing of their names to present themselves before me to assume the hood appropriate to the degree. For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Bassem Hassan Abdel Basset Abdelem. Basim Hassan Abdel Basset Abdel Alim is from St. John's, Civil Engineering. Abdel Salam Nasser Abdel Hafif Abu Graha. Abdel Salam Nasser Abdel Hafid Abu Garara is from St. John's, Oil and Gas Engineering. Wassam Mohammed Ali Adrugi. Wassam Mohammed Ali Adrugi is from Al Qums, Libya, Mechanical Engineering. Grace Abina Akisi. Grace Abina Akisi is from St. John's, Geography. Kenson Ambrose. Kenson Ambrose is from Gross Islet, St. Lucia, Chemistry. Jennifer Renee Donnan. Jennifer Renee Donnan is from St. John's, Pharmacy. Cleverson Ibegbor Asin. Cleverson. Ibegbor Essin is from St. John's Oil and Gas Engineering. Lynn Marie Frizzell. Lynn Marie Frizzell is from Goulds, Experimental Psychology. Pierre Arthur Gruyer. Pierre Arthur Gouillet is from St. John's, Earth Sciences, Geology. Javad Kondori. Javad Kondori is from St. John's, Oil and Gas Engineering. <coughs> Masood Mandiapari. Masood Madian Pari is from Tehran, Iran. Wendong Mao. Wendong Mao is from St. John's, Computer Science. Benjamin Charles Miziuk. Benjamin Charles Miziuk is from Petersham, Massachusetts, Geography. Ahmed Yusri Mohammed Al Ruby. Fariba Mohammed Manesh. Fariba Mohammed Manesh is from Tehran, Iran. Megan Jane Morrison. Megan Jane Morrison is from St. John's, Medicine. Jennifer Nicole Murphy. 
Jennifer Nicole Murphy is from Portugal Cove, St. Phillips. Chemistry. Maria Esther Nieto Blaquez. Maria Esther Nieto Blaquez is from St. John's, Biology. Olalere Sunday Olorantobi. Olalere Sunday Olorantobi is from St. John's, Oil and Gas Engineering. Nathaniel James Pollock. Nathaniel James Pollock is from St. John's, Medicine. Sahara Sadat Raskalham. Sahara Sadat Raskalam is from Esfahan, Iran. Gagandeep Kaur Sandhu. Gagandeep Kaur Sandhu is from Brampton, Ontario. Condensed Matter Physics. Nuri Paula Santisaban Vela. Nuri Paula Santisaban Vela is from Bogota, Colombia. Condensed Matter Physics. Dustin Bruce Joseph Sylvie. Dustin Bruce Joseph <laughs> Sylvie is from Victoria, British Columbia. Medicine. <laughs> Idris Olasula Sule. Idris Olasula Sule is from St. John's, Oil and Gas Engineering. Syed Nasir Danal. Syed Nasir Danal is from St. John's, Computer Engineering. Babatunde Olaya Youssef. Babatunde Olaya Youssef is from St. John's, Oil and Gas Engineering. And those who've been approved by the Senate for the degree, but are absent from this convocation. Admitted in absentia. For the degree, Doctor of Psychology. Diana Brooks. Diana Brooks is from St. John's, Clinical Psychology. Lily Michelle Ripa. Lily Michelle Ripa is from Niagara Falls, Ontario, Clinical Psychology. Marsha Rose Wausel. Marsha Rose Rousel is from Point Leamington, Clinical Psychology. Jessica Regina Marie Spurl. Jessica Regina Marie Spurl is from Conception Bay South. We have one late arriving graduate due to um, plane delays for the degree of Bachelor of Education. Amber Danielle Mouland. 
Amber Danielle Mullen is from Grand Falls, Windsor. It's a tradition <clears throat> at Memorial that each convocation session uh, is sung to by our fabulous faculty of music. And this um, wonderful group up here on the stairs is part of the, the opera program of our School of Music. And um, this is a program directed by Dr. Caroline Schiller and uh, collaborative pianist Eldon Murray. <coughs> Every year at Memorial, a full opera is produced and performed by our students. And then there is a troupe that, following the exams in the spring, tours around rural Newfoundland and Labrador. And they have been doing this, I've got to get the right number of years, a long time, I'd say 15 to 20 years they've been doing this. They perform in elementary schools and introduce the students. Um, I grew up here, and the first opera I saw, I was 18 when I went to Montreal to school. So you sing to them when they're eight and nine years old, and that makes a wonderful difference in their lives. So it's a fabulous program. Tonight, these young people, <clears throat> this is their third time today, by the way, they had a regular memorial student day with lectures and lessons and so forth. And then they tore over here, sang for us this morning, this afternoon, and they're back to sing for you tonight a little Mozart um, from some of Mozart's, two selections from the Mozart opera. And um, it's quite fitting. The text is scatter flowers while you may. They say, come along, my dear, and let's enjoy ourselves. What a joy it will be, and I hope it is being. That's not in the text, I just added that bit. <laughs>
I'd like to call now on Dr. Maureen Galston, our provost and first president of academic, to introduce the professors emeriti. I'm going to scatter a few more flowers for you, Madam Chancellor. The title of Professor Emeritus or Professor Emerita is a distinction accorded to retired members of faculty. To be eligible, a person must normally have served at least 10 years as a regular full-time faculty member and have held the rank of professor upon retirement. The prime criteria for nomination are a sustained and superlative record as a scholar as a teacher or as an academic administrator or any combination of these. Madam Chancellor, during his 45 year career at Memorial University, Dr. John Brosnan continuously held funding from the Medical Research Council and the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. To date, he has secured over $7 million in research funding $1.5 million in infrastructure support. He has published more than 180 papers and supervised nearly 90 students and postdoctoral fellows. This impressive research record has led him to being recognized with a Doctor of Science from the National University of Ireland, Distinguished Professor and Fellow at Texas A&M University, Fellow of the Royal Society of Canada, Fellowship in the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences, and Outstanding Achievement Awards from the Canadian Diabetes Association, to name a few. In 2014, he received the John Lewis Payton Distinguished University Professorship from Memorial, conferring upon him the title Distinguished University Professor. Dr. Bronsman also brings his passion to his instruction in the Department of Biochemistry. He has always been ranked highly by students and has served as a mentor to new faculty, assisting them in establishing their own research careers. Dr. Bronsman holds a BSc honors, an MSc and a DSc from the National University of Ireland and a DPhil from Oxford University. Madam Chancellor, I present to you the distinguished professor emeritus, John Brosnan. And he said, this university is a joy.
Madam Chancellor, Dr. William Driesick joined Memorial University in 1999 as the director of the Ocean Sciences Center, an appointment he hail, held while also the scientific director of Aquanet, a national center of excellence funded by the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada. In 2003, he was appointed as a Tier 1 Canada Research Chair in Marine Bioscience. Dr. Driesick has published 155 publications and 14 review articles. This research record is supported by a continuous record of funding from NSERC. He also has a long history of research experience at numerous institutions worldwide, and he has served on a number of external organizations, including the Canada Foundation for Innovation Board of Directors, the Science Advisory Council for the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, and NSERC's Vanier Scholarship and Grant Selection Committees. He has super supervised six PhD and four MSc students to completion, and he is currently co-supervising one PhD student. Dr. Dresa holds a BSc from York University, an MSc from the University of Toronto, and a PhD from the University of British Columbia. Madam Chancellor, I present to you the distinguished professor emeritus, William Dresick. Madam Chancellor, an internationally recognized expert on Newfoundland and Labrador, sociologist Dr. Douglas House has been awarded numerous research grants and two major federal fellowships over his career. He was appointed a member of the Order of Canada in 2001. He received the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal in 2012 and the Public Policy Forum's Frank McKenna Award for Leadership in Public Policy in 2018. He is the author of seven books, 35 articles and book chapters, and 27 major reports. And he is also distinguished for his important work as an academic administrator. Throughout his career, Dr. House has been called upon to apply his research and administrative background to a number of major roles in the public service. He made crucial contributions to the province at times of economic instability by serving as the chairperson of the Economic Recovery Commission and the Royal Commission on Employment and Unemployment. A superlative teacher of both undergraduate and graduate students, Dr. House designed groundbreaking curricula in sociological theory and social and economic development and made an outstanding contribution on various supervisory committees. Dr. House holds a BA from Memorial, an MA from Oxford University, and a PhD from McGill University. Madam Chancellor, I present to you the distinguished Professor Emeritus, Douglas House. Madam Chancellor, last but not least, 
Dr. Robert Sweeney is an internationally recognized award-winning leader in the fields of the history of capitalism, Canadian social history and digital history, with an outstanding publishing record, a pioneer role in, the, in computer application design within the digital humanities field. He is a recipient of important grants and a well-known contributor to public engagement. Dr. Sweeney's highly regarded book, Why Did We Choose to Industrialize Montreal, 1819 to 1849, published by McGill Queen's University Press in 2015, won two prestigious awards, the Governor General's History Award for Scholarly Research and the Sir John A. Macdonald Prize awarded by the Canadian Historical Association. It is the first non-fiction book from the province of Newfoundland and Labrador to win a Governor General's Award. He is also a co-recipient of the Stockholm Award in 2001 in recognition of the team that created the innovative website Vieux Montréal. He is the author of four books and the co-editor of three. As well, he has published a total of 59 articles and reviews in journals and 23 individual book chapters. Dr. Sweeney holds a BA from Sir George Williams University now known as Concordia, an MA from the Université de Québec à Montréal, and a PhD from McGill University. Madam Chancellor, I present to you the distinguished professor emeritus, Robert Sweeney. Madam Chancellor, for the degree of Doctors of Laws, Honoris Causa, Timothy Laverne McNeil. Madam Chancellor, modern Western media is saturated with coverage of people who compete for public attention. Influencers try to collect the most online followers, the most likes, and the highest earnings. It's no longer enough to keep up with the Joneses. The goal is to leave the Joneses treading water in the wake of your brand tsunami. Graduates, if this sounds like another tired jab at millennial culture, I should clarify that this behavior is not exclusive to youth pop culture. Businesses would rather boast of having the number one bestseller instead of promoting product quality and sustainable practices. And our political discourse sometimes seems to forsake nation building in favor of character smears and cults of personality. Now, I humbly ask for your pardon for my slightly negative opening remarks on this day of celebration, but they bring me to a happier, healthier example in the northern region of our beloved province. A core principle of Inuit culture is to put the common good of the community ahead of personal success. Today, Memorial University celebrates the living embodiment of this principle in Tim McNeil. Tim has dedicated his career and his lifetime to improving opportunities for the people of Nunatsuvut and beyond. Tim's early life was in Makovic, coastal Labrador, in a house with 12 children, nine siblings, plus three more who blended in, a situation that was not unusual by community convention. He attended high school in Northwest River, central Labrador, and he then proceeded to Memorial University in St. John's. Tim completed his coursework during the winter semesters because his family and community both needed him back in Labrador uh, during the summer and the fall and it gave him a chance to save up for his university expenses. This made for quite a longer degree completion time, 
but Tim clearly saw value and opportunity in returning to St. John's each year and then on to Mount St. Vincent University. Recognizing the connection between education and opportunity will become a central theme in Tim McNeil's professional life. Tim's formal public service career started with outreach work on behalf of the Lab Labrador Friendship Center. He then became a career health counselor within the Labrador Inuit Association and then transferred to a new role as an education advisor where he served for 15 years. During this time, Tim McNeil and his LIA colleagues made significant progress in their effort to improve Inuit rights and benefits, including the establishment of the Nunatsiavut government in 2005. Tim's role transitioned into the new government as their deputy minister in the Department of Education and Economic Development, a post at which he still serves today. This new department, with Tim McNeil's leadership and long-term vision, has overseen the incorporation of Inuit values into uh, early childhood education, the K-12 system, and post-secondary programs. This includes the use of Inuktitut language, Inuit culture and life skills, as well as Inuit child development traditions. The Inuit way of knowing is now ingrained both in school life and in community life. Tim McNeil's department has also overseen the continued expansion of Labrador post-secondary education through the development and delivery of the Inuit Northern Nursing Program, the Inuit Bachelor of Social Work, and the Inuit Bachelor of Ed Education, and there's more to come. The result is that vital social programs in the North are staffed with more qualified people who are well-versed in local values. The department has always also established uh, economic development contract with the Boise Bay Mining and Muskrat Falls hydroelectric projects. McNeil's approach to these agreements is not to focus on a quota of local jobs. Tim's group meets with the employers to determine the educational prerequisites for the upcoming work. They identify the needs for one-day courses for entry-level positions, all the way through trades diplomas and university degrees for higher-level jobs. The next steps are to remove barriers and to provide support for prospective local students. These students can then complete their education in a timely manner and maximize their prospects for long-term success. And where local workers succeed, the community also succeeds. Tim McNeil is clearly a man who's used to having a full schedule, yet he always finds time to meet with someone who seeks career or personal guidance. If you have an interest in education, then Tim McNeil has time for you. Those, uh, those who have worked with him have said that he has a gift to inspire and to motivate and that he will always lend a compassionate ear when needed. Many of these same people stated that they are thrilled, proud, overjoyed, and delighted that Tim was being considered for this honorary degree. These, these words are further testament that Tim McNeil is a man who puts his community ahead of himself. So, can we get Tim McNeil the fame, fortune, and legion of online followers that he deserves? Probably not. But I suspect that he prefers his reward to be quiet time in his garden or at his cabin, preferably with his children and grandchildren. But, for tonight, we are very pleased that a humble, unassuming leader has been brought into the spotlight so that we may learn what the Labrador Inuit already know. I present to you, for the degree of Doctor of Laws, Timothy Laverne McNeil. By virtue of the authority entrusted to me, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Thank you.
Tim McNeil was born and raised in the Labrador Inuit community of Makovic. He attended residential school in Northwest River and studied at Memorial University and Mount St. Vincent University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. In 1990, he joined the Labrador Inwood Association as an education advisor and continued in that role until 2005, helping th to fight for recognition for Inuit rights and benefits during that period. Mr. McNeil assisted with the Labrador Inwood Land Claims Agreement. Upon the creation of the new Natsuvik government in 2005, he was appointed Deputy Minister of the Department of Education and Economic Development, a position he continues to hold today. upon you now, Dr. McNeil, to address convocation. Good evening, Chancellor, Madam Chancellor, members of the Board of Regents, members of the Senate of Faculty, and members of the gradu graduating class, and your families and your friends, and my crowd that uh, came with me from Labrador and <laughs> from town, all of the distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a fine evening to you. I, I, I would like to begin by, by uh, saying a, a very special thank you to my wife, who, uh, who agreed to join me for this very special occasion. My wife is not, uh, and nor am I, very used to bigger fancy functions, and uh, I, I can tolerate them a bit more, but my wife is not too fussy, so I was extremely pleased that she came to join me, uh, <laughs> and uh, we had a reception at the university last night. For <clears throat> we had a reception at the university last night, and we had a wonderful luncheon with uh, Lieutenant Governor today and now this, this evening, so, and we're, we're, still, we're still together. <laughs> <clears throat> Second, uh, my sincere appreciation to Memorial University and, uh, and the Senate for, an, uh, for the honor you have, uh, you've given to me. I'm, I'm tr I must say I, I'm truly humbled. Uh, I recall when I first received the email from, from uh, Dr. Kachanowski, and uh, I can tell you that I, I was stunned for a while. Uh, it took a little while for uh, things to settle in, and then I had to respond as to whether I would accept a degree, and of course I, I, I would, and uh, I had to write a note back, and all I said really was uh, that yes, I most certainly would accept an honorary degree, and that I was tickled pink about it. <laughs> and I, I can honestly tell you I, I'm still tickled pink. <laughs> but anyway, I, I have a few words I wanted to share with the, with the graduates, and uh, I, I must say, sitting back here and watching, and especially the undergraduates, the, the power and, 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 and the, the beauty of what was coming out of their faces that I knew was coming from their bodies, the sense of accomplishment. It was, it was just a pleasure and a wonderful thing to see. Uh, I, I wanted to share a few notes, uh, uh, and, but I, and I will break from my notes now and then, but I, I, I've been working in post-secondary for a number of years, uh, su providing support to students to, to carry on into, into upgrading, into colleges, into universities. And, and one thing I've realized over the last 29 years is, is it is a lot of work to get through the degree programs and get through all of the courses and to get all the credits you need and, and to meet the requirements of the institutions, and, and that takes a lot of work. But you know the other thing that we forget sometimes is that when, when you start on that journey, that life goes on. Life goes on. And uh, you have to do your studies, you have to get your credits, but you know, uh, your car is gonna break down sometime. Some of you w w probably ran out of money. Uh, some of you may have gotten sick. Uh, elder, more elderly students would have had children that ended up in hospital. There's a whole lot of stuff that happens. And, and I see that on a daily basis with the students that we're supporting. So sometimes the least of my worries is, is not so much as happening at the academies, 
what's happening in, in a person's life. So I have to applaud you all for, for getting to this point. You, you've, you've done it, you've accomplished your goal. <clears throat> when, when the lady gave me this gown, she said uh, that actually Joey Small would have worn the same gown. And uh, I, I thought he was a lot smaller than that, but uh, maybe I'm, I'm fairly small after all, I guess. Uh, uh, anyway, a few thoughts, but before I, 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 I go there, I, I just kind of want to set the stage a little bit. Uh, as Adam mentioned, and I appreciate your, your kind words. Uh, I grew up in a small town in northern Labrador, actually the scenic community of Makovic. And there was about 280 people in the community back then. But actually, I spent the first, grew up, my first four years of my life, I didn't grow up in a community. I grew up at our own place, at, at our homestead. And we grew up, I grew up outside of town, about six or five or six miles outside of town. And uh, our house was full, lots of children, uh, with mom and dad, and other children besides my brothers and sister that needed care sometimes that mom and dad would take care of. We were independent, and both mom and dad were people who thought that anything was possible. Anything was doable. All you needed to do was to try. If I could mention first about my dad, he worked with uh, a contractor that was building a, a radar site close to town. As some people might remember, the, uh, yeah, the early 50s, the Cold War was going on between Russia and the United States, so the American government invested a lot of money into the, the, the middle uh, early warning system and the, uh, the dual line, the distance early warning system. So my dad had uh, got a job working with the contractors on building one of those sites. And I mention that because uh, those days, nobody, we lived five, six miles out of town, and nobody in town had, had a toilet. Nobody in town had uh, electricity. Nobody had a bathtub, but we did at our homestead. And the reason we did was because Dad had some connections with the contractor who was building the base, and uh, he thought that was a good thing. So my dad was always thinking outside the box. I think that was one of the things I learned from him. But now from my mom, I learned a lot of things as well. She was also all, always willing to try anything, and I think she passed that trade on to me. I was, uh, as you mentioned, one of, one of a lot of children in the family, and I was one of the younger ones. I was third from the bottom. But I was also quite pale. I was small. I was probably, uh, uh, probably a little bit sickly looking. Uh, my older brother said I was sort of like a cut dog, whatever that meant. <laughs> anyway, so because I was, I was small and pale and weakly, I, I didn't end up spending a whole lot of time out working with my brothers, my older brothers. I spent more time working with my mom. And because I spent so much time working with my mom, I learned a lot of things from her. And one of the important things she taught me was how to sew. But you know, she didn't just teach me how to sew. She taught me how to cut patterns. She taught me how to, how to make socks, how to make vamps, how to make mitts, how to make coats. But not only that, mom taught me that I could do pretty well anything if I tried. I can remember clearly uh, the first time I, I attempted to make a coat for myself, and I think I was probably 13, maybe 14 years old, and I, I was going to make a sillipak, a traditional Inuit coat, and uh, I asked my mom about it, and mom said, well, Tim, just look at it. Just look at the coat. She said, all it is is a bit of material. It's just sewn together. And she said, if you try, you can do it. So I tried, and I did it. So I, I want to tell you that from my mom and my dad, I learned that pretty well anything was possible. And you can get a lot of things done if, you, if you're willing to try and if you're willing to think outside the box. If I might just shift gears a little bit and, uh, and talk and say a few words about education and learning. I actually ran away from home at the age of four from my lower end of the community and, and went to school. You see, I, I, I remember looking up towards the school at this massive crowd of people in front of the school. And I, I'd ask my mother if I could go and she said, you're too young, you can't go yet. And, and I, I wanted to go real bad, but I was looking through the window, and there was about 70 people there. 
And I thought, you know, if I go up there and I merge into that group, that massive, massive group of people, massive group of people, I think it was bigger than Trump's inaugural. <laughs> if, I could, if I could merge in there, that they would never know I was there and I could go to school. So I went up and into the middle of the community and merged in. Now, some of my siblings was there and they saw me and they sent me home. But as I was going home, I ran into the old, an old lady who was the principal at the school. And I was crying because I wanted to go to school. And she said, uh, she asked me what was wrong. And I told her I wanted to school, uh, go to school. And I guess she must have liked something about that. Because she let me, as well as all the other four years old, four year olds, go to school on Wednesday, every Wednesday afternoon. So I sort of credit myself for starting preschool in McCovey. <laughs> That's my claim to fame. <laughs> but on, on a more serious note, uh, what I'd like to uh, speak ab about as well is uh, I, I, I realize that all of the stuff that happens in the, in the institutions, in the K-12 system, and in, in, in the academies, in our college and our schools, is all really important. And it's all, it's all necessary and it's all required for people to be, uh, be competitive and competent in, this, in today's society. But what I want to remind you of is to never, never un underestimate the value and the importance of all the other knowledge that you as a parent and you as a grandparent will be required to pass on to your children and your grandchildren. As a parent and grandchildren, you have a huge responsibility to impart knowledge to your children and grandchildren, and don't ever underestimate that. If I could just share with you a little short story about me and my oldest granddaughter and the importance of sharing knowledge. Shelby is my oldest granddaughter, and she's now, I, 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 have, I have four grandchildren and uh, the fifth one on the way. Shelby is my oldest, and she's now 12. She's going on 15, but actually at the time she was four. And I always took Shelby hunting a lot on the ice and on, on the snowmobile in the boat, we, we went hunting for what food we could find, uh, whether it was seals or, or salmon or char or, or partridges. So she spent a lot of time hunting with me. And uh, we hunted for whatever we could get, what we needed. And Shelby always had her own pink PB gun. And anyway, it was this particular spring, we were hunting on the, on the, on the spring, in the spring on the bay, and uh, a, a large, Lake Melville here, it's a huge expanse of, of, of lake. And uh, we had finally spotted a seal. And so we went to where the seal was, and the seal, of course, went down into, in, into the water. But we knew that we had to find the seal's holes, and we had to, to, to bar up the, the breeding holes and, and just stay at the main hole where the seal would come back for, for, for air. So me and Shelby was kneeling by that seal hole, waiting and everything is really quiet, and everything is calm, and we're just waiting patiently, waiting and waiting. And my granddaughter, four, I'm sitting there with my, with my harpoon, my unak, and she's sitting there with her BB gun, and Shelby says to me, she says, Grampy, I know why you're teaching me this, hey. And I said to Shelby, I said, teaching you what, Shelby? And she said, teaching me how to get a seal. I said, what do you think I'm teaching you how to get a seal, Shelby? She's, and her response, her response just stuck with me. Her response was, you're teaching me how to get a seal so I can feed you when you're old. <laughs> and that, <clears throat> that is, is the true value and importance of the knowledge that as a parent and a, and a grandparent, you'll be required to pass on to your children and your grandchildren. I don't have much more to say, but I, I was at the recep reception last night. I know you're all anxious, to, a little bit anxious to, to go and celebrate, so I'll, I'll, I'll conclude very, very soon. But at the reception last night, I, I was talking with several wonderful people and, uh, about McCovic, my home community, and uh, I agreed that I would share a word with them, a word that we use commonly in our community. And it's a little bit of an unusual word, but I think it's, I think it's a good word. Uh, when we... Uh, and it's just, uh, uh, you know, all of the communities, I guess, and, and regions in our province have a lot of slang words. You know, we don't consider it a slang word, 
uh, but it's a word that we use uh, that we use for when instead of saying sometimes really something is really good or or some or something is is very very fast we don't use those words we use the word ugly so instead of saying uh, a dog team was really fast we would say that dog team was ugly fast <laughs> if the snowmobile was fast we would say the dog the snowmobile was ugly fast so that worked quite well it works quite well within our community a a as a young boy growing up if i saw a girl and she was pretty i could say you're ugly pretty <laughs> and, and she took it as a compliment it, it didn't work quite so well with girls from out of town. <laughs> so I want to end with uh, just telling all the graduates, all the, all the, the men, all the, all the men, you look ugly handsome, <laughs> and all the women, you look ugly pretty. <laughs> Before concluding, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the leaders of the Labrador Inuit Association and the national government, who over time has given me the opportunity to try different things, different approaches to training. Leaders like William Anderson III and Sam Anderson, and Joe Dicker and Tony Anderson, William Barber, and more recently Jim Lyle and Sarah Leo and Johannes Lance. But I'd also like to acknowledge my staff. You know, I have some really wonderful staff and sometimes I, I try to provide some leadership for them but at the end of the day they're the ones that does the really hard work and they know who they are. They have people like Lucy and Bobby and Roberta and Jody and Roberta and the list goes on. Without their, without their support and dedication, our efforts would have been much more limited. I'd also like to acknowledge the dedication and efforts by our partners at the university and, uh, and, and within the college system. Without those, the efforts of those institutions and our partnership approach, we would be much more limited. So as a final note to the graduates, if I can just remind you that anything is possible if you try and don't mind thinking out the box, outside the box, and don't ever, ever underestimate the value of the knowledge and the wisdom that you will pass on as a parent and as a grandparent. Once again, Memorial University, I respect the, and appreciate the honor of this degree, and I thank you kindly. Nakamir. Well, Dr. McNeil, <clears throat> thank you very much for sharing your wisdom, your wonderful stories, and your sense of place. We're very lucky to have you. Labrador is lucky to have you. So thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed your time. This brings to a close this part of your celebration, the formal part. And uh, I'm sure there's something left in the day for you to uh, celebrate. <laughs> um, again, we want to tell you, I guess it can't be said too often, that uh, we feel about our graduates and our students a sense of pride and joy a sense of assurance, a sense of trust. We know you're risking to learn and we encourage you to keep doing that. But know <clears throat> that if you are in community and you build community in whatever your endeavors are, then you will be supported in your risk taking, in your outside the boxing. And that's so important to know. Um, so we are now together as alumni of Memorial. I'm an alumna of Memorial University. I'm very proud of that. So you are members of our alumni, fa alumni family now. And we hope that wherever you go, whatever you do, that you remember your memorial time 
stay in touch, be in touch, and uh, reach out to us in whatever way. And we're all, we granted, we will always be reaching out to you. You can be sure of that. You know, <clears throat> I love these program books. And one of the things that I always notice when you come across the stage um, is where you come from. I've just picked up page 18 by chance and um, getting a Bachelor of Business Administration um, today were people from Lahore, Pakistan, Toronto, Cornerbrook, Doha, Qatar, Nawazhar, Yantai, China, etc. So in coming to Memorial, you have made this place and it's a place of all the cultures that you constitute. I really want to say that if you didn't come from Newfoundland, you would consider staying here. And if you are from Newfoundland and you go away, that you could, might consider coming back here. People are our most valuable resource. They are our treasure. And Memorial University is a, and a very important part of making this place be the best that it can be. So I just ask you to think about doing that. You are so welcome behind you and above there are the people who love you and care about you and support you. And I would like to finish your evening by inviting you graduates to stand, do a 180 turn and give them a thunderous thank you for what they have done for you. And we'll help you. And you can turn back again, but I'm going to invite all the family and friends. You can remain standing. I'm going to invite all the family and friends to stand now and join us. We're going to conclude your evening <clears throat> by singing the first and last verses of the Ode to Newfoundland. And again, a big apology from me for you putting up with this dreadful sound all night. But it's been wonderful to be here with you. Good luck to you. Have a wonderful evening and a wonderful life. Carlo Campus, Memorial UK campus, is celebrating a significant milestone this year. Carlo Campus marked its 50th anniversary with reunion events in Harlow and will continue the celebration this fall with events in St. John's and Corner Brook. 
The federal government is investing more than five and a half million dollars into multidisciplinary research led by Memorial that focuses on techniques and technologies to aid in oil spill response in Canada. Six new projects aim to ensure Canadians have access to the best scientific information and methods available to respond to oil spills by supporting collaborative research among experts both in Canada and worldwide. And the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science celebrated its golden anniversary this summer with more than 200 alumni and friends, including Canadian space legend Dr. Roberta Bondar, who spoke at an evening event at Signal Hill campus.